Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala Spanish. I am Rajiv Saxena and I teach Spanish in the center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American studies of the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We are in the paper entitled Intermediate Grammar. And in the previous modules, you have come to know about the personal pronouns. But they dealt with the subject pronouns only. The objective of this module is to study the object pronouns which have a very different composition than the English pronouns. I repeat, in this module, you will study the object pronouns which have a very different composition than the English pronouns. They are two kinds of object pronouns in Spanish. One is the direct object pronoun and two is the indirect object pronoun or in short as we like to call it is the direct object pronoun DOP and IOP or the indirect object pronoun. The direct object pronouns replace direct object nouns. Direct object pronouns los objetos de complemento directo are yo, me, nosotros, nos, tú, te, vosotros, os, el, usted, lo, los, them, you, masculine, la, her, it, feminine, and las, them, you, feminine. So I repeat, it is very simple. Me, te, nos, os, les, los, la and las. Take a printout of this from the e-text and learn it up properly because once you know how, what are the object pronouns, direct object pronouns, then it will be very easy for you to learn them, use them and make your communication in Spanish much better and much more scientific. So, the relevant question to be asked over here is why do we need to use a direct object pronoun? Or, why do we need to learn this module? Well, this module is important and especially the direct object pronouns are important because it relieves us from endlessly repeating the direct object itself. So, for example, in English, I'll give you a sentence which is very e a very day-to-day -day thing like I pick up the book, I look at the book and I decide to buy the book versus a shorter, simpler, much faster sentence would be I pick up the book, I look at it and I decide to buy it. So this makes the language much more smooth, efficient and you're communicating much more without repeating yourself. So that by re replacing book by it, it makes it sound much better the sentence and also your communicative skills are improving. So, I look at the book, I decide to buy the book, and I pick up the book, I look at it, and I decide to buy it. It is much more better to use the direct object pronoun. So, let us look at some more examples of the same type. Radha is the subject of the sentence, the person in charge of the verb. Radha is a subject, prepares is the verb and is a transitive verb as it transfers action to an object and so requires an object. And desert is the direct object. It receives the action of the verb. The desert is what Radha prepares. So in a simple sentence like Radha prepares dessert, we can see that when we analyze it, Radha is the subject of the sentence. Prepares is the verb and it is a transitive verb as it transfers action to an object and so requires an object. And then what is the object? The object over here, the direct object is the desert as it receives the action of the verb. The desert is what Radha prepares. Now, let us replace the direct object desert with a direct object pronoun it. In, in English, the, the sentence would then read, 
Radha prepares it. Now let us do this in Spanish. Radha prepara el postre. Radha, subject, prepara, verb, conjugated as third person singular, feminine, and el postre, which is the desert and which is the, the object, the direct object. Let us replace the direct object with the direct object pronoun it. We've already learned that it is low in Spanish. So, the Spanish sentence would now read as Radha lo prepara. So, it becomes much more smooth and much more efficient. Radha prepara el postre. Radha lo prepara. You do not need to repeat el postre every time. As the word direct implies, it receives the direct action of the verb and can be identified easily. Direct object pronouns always answer the question what or whom. I repeat, as the word direct implies, it receives the direct action of the verb and can be identified easily. Direct object pronouns always answer the question what or whom. In the previous example, if we ask the question what does Radha prepare? Then the pronoun it refers to the implicit noun desert. Radha prepares it. So now, because we are asking the question what, the answer is it or in this case, the implicit noun which is the desert. Let us take another example to make this much more clear and simple. Let us take an example in English and then we do translation into Spanish and analyze it. Okay, so let us pick up, for example, I eat a green apple. Now, replace the object noun with an object pronoun. So, it is I eat it. In Spanish, I eat a green apple. Como una manzana verde. And I eat it is la como. Why la? Because you're talking about a manzana, which is feminine and it is singular. So, la como, feminine, singular. I eat it, la como. It is the DOP here or the direct object pronoun as it answers the question what. So, if we ask what is being eaten, then the answer will be it, the apple. So, in the previous one, Radha prepares it, the it is referring to the dessert. In this question, I eat it, the question what is answered by the apple. So, it's very simple and very clear. What we have to note is that lo, la, los and las refer to both people and to things. In some parts of Spain, when referring to people, le is used instead of lo. So, and even in Latin America, this is done. And the examples are, I saw him, Ajay, besides Swati. A Ajay le vi al lado de Swati. Or another way of saying this in Spanish would be, A Ajay lo vi al lado de Swati. Another thing to be remembered is lo, la, los and las are also the direct object pronouns for usted and ustedes. So they mean you as well as him, her, it and them. So keep it in mind that these DOP or IOPs lead to a lot of confusion as lo, la, los and las refer to both people and things. Some parts of Spain, when you're referring to people, le is being used instead of lo. And thirdly, lo, la, los, la are also the direct object pronouns for usted and ustedes. So they mean you as well as him, her, it and them. So keep this in mind when you're doing the translations and by the context many times you know what the direct object pronouns of a sentence are. 
let us move on to a very relevant question which is where are the direct object pronouns placed where do we pay, place a dop in a in a sentence in spanish the conjugated verbs are preceded by the direct object pronouns unlike in english where the pronoun follows the verb so remember the fun, one thing which is different from spanish and english is that in spanish the conjugated verbs are preceded by the direct object so the direct object comes before the conjugated verb and in english the pronoun follows the conjugated verb so let us look at some examples in english and in Sam in spanish to bring out the differences between the two languages so let us pick up a sentence like where can the students be i have been looking for them for an hour and i can't find them ah I, i saw them in the park so donde estarán los estudiantes hace una hora que los busco y no los encuentro la respuesta or the answer los vi en el parque so i repeat donde estarán los estudiantes hace una hora que los busco y no los encuentro so just by using estudiantes once you just replace it by los los and that is it it is una hora que los busco y no los encuentro and then the answer also follows the same di direct object pronoun dop which is los los vi en el parque so by just putting one time estudiantes the entire sentence context becomes very clear and the communication is much more efficient the direct object pronouns precede the auxiliary verb haber in compound tenses so for example ramesh have they gifted you something yes they have gifted me a car ramesh te han regalado algo si sí, ellos me han regalado un coche i repeat ramesh te because you're talking about the direct object pronoun te han regalado algo si sí, ellos me han regalado un coche which means i have been gifted a car the direct object pronoun also precedes the verb in negative statements and questions have you taken my book no i haven't taken it has tomado mi libro no no lo he tomado so it's very clear that the answer is ah uh, no i haven't taken it what well obviously you're referring to the book so the translation in spanish would be has tomado mi libro no no lo he tomado it becomes much more efficient so when it comes to the infinitive constructions what happens the direct object pronoun may either precede the first verb or be attached to the infinitive so let us pick up another example to clarify this have you visited the national museum no but i want to visit it has visitado el museo nacional no pero quiero verlo or no pero lo quiero ver so spanish this does give us this dual possibility of putting the dop or the direct object pronoun after the the verb which is an infinitive or before the conjugated verb so both possibilities are acceptable and grammatical in spanish no pero quiero verlo or no pero lo quiero there so likewise in the progressive tenses also the direct object pronouns can be replaced either before the form of estar or can come after it in an attached form please note that when the dop or the direct object pronoun is attached to the present participle or the gerund an accent mark is added to the vowel before the endo this is a rule 
when the DOP is attached to the present participle, the gerund, an accent mark is added to the vowel before the endo. Have you drunk the milk? No, I am drinking it now. The translation of this in Spanish would be ¿Has bebido la leche? No, estoy bebiendo la ahora. I repeat, no, estoy bebiendo la ahora. With an accent on the E which is preceding the endo. So, estoy bebiendo la ahora. Estoy bebiendo la ahora. Or, la estoy bebiendo ahora. It is only when the la is added to the gerund that you need the accent on which comes on the na, on the verb which has been done in the gerund form and it comes on the vowel which comes before the endo. Clear? Let us move on to how which are the other rules. The direct object pronouns is also attached to command forms. Please see chapter 5 of this paper. An accent mark is also added to the stressed vowel of the command form except in the case of one syllable commands. I repeat, an accent mark is also added to the stress vowel of the command form except in the case of one syllable commands. Can I pack the suitcase tomorrow? No. Do it now. ¿Puedo hacer la maleta mañana? No. Hazlo ahora. So, it is hazla ahora because you're talking about the maleta and you're giving an order. No. Hazla ahora. Another example uh, that I would like to talk about would be I do not want to sing that song. The answer would be, no, sing it. No quiero cantar esta canción. No, cántala. Why? Because you're giving an order, an imperative to the person to sing it. So, no quiero cantar esa canción is, no, cántala with an accent on a, cántala. Another thing that we should keep in mind is, that when the direct object pronoun refers to people, a construction of a with the corresponding stressed pronoun is attached to the sentence if necessary to clearly indicate the pronoun. I repeat that when the direct object pronoun refers to people, a construction of a with the corresponding stressed pronoun is attached to the sentence if necessary to clearly indicate the pronoun. Did you recognize Seema and Mahesh? I recognized her, but I didn't see him. Reconociste a Seema y a Mahesh? La reconocí a Elia, pero no lo vi a él. So, by putting a Elia and a El, you are stressing on the, the la or the lo. So, la Reconocí a Elia, pero no lo vi a él. Is it very clear? It is very clear because Spanish is a very scientific language. Now let us move on to another aspect which comes with the direct object pronouns. That is the indirect object pronoun. The indirect object pronouns replace indirect object nouns. Forms of the indirect object pronoun, los objetos de complemento directo are yo, me, to me, nosotros, nos, to us, tú, te, to you, vosotros, us, to you, plural, and el, elia, usted is le, les, and unlike the direct object pronouns, Indirect object pronouns usually tell for whom or to whom the action is done. I repeat, unlike the direct object pronouns, indirect object pronouns usually tell for whom or to whom the action is done. So, DOP answers the question what, 
or who and IOP, the indirect object pronoun, answers the question for whom or to whom the action is done. Take a printout of all the indirect object pronouns that we have listed over here from the e-text and learn them up and then start practicing. I will continue ahead with some examples to illustrate how we are going to be talking about indirect object pronouns, how they are used, in what sentences and how does the context change. Te di un anillo. I gave you a ring. You can clearly see that if we ask the question, to whom was the ring given to, the answer would be the indirect object pronoun. So, in the sentence, te di un anillo, the question, to whom the ring was given to, is te, which is the indirect object pronoun, or you, which is the indirect object pronoun in English. Let us move on to another thing which is the prepositional pronouns. It is very important here that we talk about the prepositional pronouns as it is widely used in the case of direct object and indirect object pronouns. These pronouns are used with the prepositions a to make it clear to whom is the direct object or indirect object referring to. So, for example, we have a mi, a ti, a el, elia usted, a nosotros, nosotras, a vosotros, vosotras, and a ellos, elias, ustedes. I repeat, we can have the direct object pronouns or indirect object pronouns in the example with following with an a to clarify who is the direct object or indirect object? A mi, a ti, a el, elia, usted, a nosotros, nosotras, a vosotros, vosotras, and a ellos, a elias, and a ustedes. Let us pick up some concrete examples so that it becomes much more clear how to use the indirect object pronouns. For example, le toca a el. It is his turn. Whose turn? His. Le toca a él. Los veo a ellos. I see them. Whom? Them. Los veo a ellos. Let us go on and look at another example. Le di una manzana. I gave him or her an apple. Le di una manzana. Whom? Le. Clear? Now the use of this le has created a confusion. We don't know whether it is masculine or feminine. To get rid of this ambiguity, an indirect object noun in Spanish is usually accompanied by the corresponding indirect object pronoun. Le or les, depending upon whether the noun is singular or plural. I repeat, the use of le creates confusion because we do not know whether it is masculine or feminine. So, to get rid of this ambiguity, an indirect object pronoun is usually accompanied by the corresponding indirect object pronoun. Le or les, depending upon whether the noun is singular or plural. So, for example, le di una manzana a Archana. I gave an apple to Archana. Did you write to your nephews? Yes, I also sent uh, my sister a letter. Les escribiste a tus sobrinos? Sí, y también le mandé una carta a mi hermana. Sí, y también le mandé una carta a mi hermana. So it's very clear that you can use these to clarify who the indirect object pronoun is. Now let us move on to the same question that we had asked previously. Where are the direct object pronouns placed? Now, because we are talking about indirect object pronouns, let us ask where are these indirect object pronouns placed? Well, just like the direct object pronouns, indirect object pronouns are also placed both before simple and compound forms 
of the conjugated verb. But in English, it is the opposite. The pronouns follow the verb. So, for example, Rubina gave me the suitcase or I have given him her my notebook in Spanish would be translated as Rubina me dio la maleta. Le he dado mi cuaderno. Le he dado mi cuaderno. So it's very clear. Now let us move on to a slightly complicated thing. What happens when there is a double object pronoun in a sentence? When the direct object and the indirect object pronouns come together in Spanish, and this can happen very frequently, then the indirect object pronoun always precedes the direct object pronoun. So, the IOP always comes before the DOP. When a third person indirect object pronoun, lay or lace, come before a third person direct object pronoun, lo, la, los and la, the former changes to say. This is a rule. Please remember that when a third person IOP, Le or le come before a third person DOP, lo, las or los and las, the former changes to say. And when the IOP and DOP are coming together, the IOP always comes before the DOP. So the DOP comes first and then the IOP comes. So let us look at some examples to clarify this, these rules that we have just said. Le plus lo in Spanish becomes say lo. Les plus lo becomes say lo. Les plus la becomes say la. Les plus la becomes say la. And les plus los becomes say los. And les plus los becomes say las. And les plus las becomes say las. In the same manner, we go on. Let us talk about some examples to clarify and to illustrate the rules that we have just taught. The mi boligrafo a Hitesh. I gave my pen to Hitesh. Now let us replace the direct object nouns with the object pronouns. I gave it to him. What was given? The direct object pronoun. Boligrafo, lo. To whom? Indirect object pronoun. Hitesh, le. So, Le lo di? No, that is incorrect. You cannot have le and lo together. We've just been taught that it is always se lo di. I gave it to him. The correct form is se lo di because the rules prohibit us to use le and lo together. So it is le se lo di, the correct form, and le lo di is incorrect, ungrammatical. So, let us revise the important aspects of direct pronouns. When you have both a direct object pronoun and an indirect object pronoun, in the same sentence, the indirect object pronoun comes first. Elios me los dan. They gave them to me. IOP me, DOP los. I repeat, Elios me los dan. IOP me and DOP los. So, the IOP comes before the DOP me los dan. Elia te la vende. She sells it to you. Where is the IOP? It is te. And what is the DOP? It is la. So, Elia te la vende. Whenever both pronouns begin with the letter L, Change the first pronoun to say. Le lo changes to se lo. Le la changes to se la. Le los changes to se los. Le las changes to se las. Le les lo becomes se lo. Les la becomes se la. Les los becomes se los. And les las becomes se las. I would suggest. Take a printout of this from the e-text 
and memorize. The reason for changing lay low to say low is merely to avoid the tongue twisting effect of two short consecutive words that begin with the letter L. To demonstrate this, first quickly say Leslas and then quickly say Selas. So you can know that Leslas is more difficult and Selas becomes much more easy and is not tongue twisting. How much easier it is to say Selas, right? In negative sentences, the word comes directly before the first pronoun. So the negative word comes directly before the first pronoun. No se lo tengo. I don't have it for you. Nunca se los compro. I never buy it for them. Because the pronoun se can have so many meanings, it is always helpful to clarify it by using a prepositional phrase. Now, we can pick up the example of El se lo dice. It is ambiguous. He tells it to whom? So, let us put a phrase. El se lo dice a Juan. He tells it to him, to Juan. El se lo dice a Maria. He tells it to Maria. El se lo dice a Maria. And El se lo dice a Elia. He tells it to her. So, in sentences with two verbs, there are two options regarding the placement of the pronouns. Place them immediately before the conjugated verb or attach them directly to the infinitive. She should explain it to me. Elia me lo debe explicar. Elia me lo debe explicar. Or the other way of saying it, as we have discussed previously, that Spanish allows you to use this. Elia debe explicármelo with an accent on a. Elia debe explicármelo. Let us move on to other examples like I want to tell it to you. Te lo quiero decir. Quiero decírtelo with an accent on I. Te lo quiero decir or quiero decírtelo. You need to send it to them. Se la necesitas enviar a ellos. Or Another way of saying it, necesitas enviársela a ellos. Please be careful that when attaching the pronouns to the infinitive, a written accent is added to the first syllable of the infinitive. Why? Because by doing this, you're preserving the sound of the infinitive. So, the rule is that when attaching the pronouns to the infinitive, a written accent is also added to the first syllable, uh, sorry, the final syllable of the infinitive. This preserves the sound of the infinitive. When the pronouns are attached to the infinitive, make the sentence negative by placing the negative verb directly before the conjugated verb. I repeat, when the pronouns are attached to the infinitive, make the sentence negative by attaching the negative word directly before the conjugated verb. Elia debe explicármelo. Elia no debe explicármelo. Quiero decírtelo. No quiero decírtelo. Necesitas enviársela a ellos. And no necesitas enviársela a ellos. So, to conclude, we would like to say is that I hope that this was comprehensive and that you have understood all the nuances of indirect and direct object pronouns. Please go to the section marked self-assessment and do the exercises to get all the rules internalized and so that you can start speaking, writing and reading perfectly in Spanish. Muchas gracias.